Rio Ferdinand. How are you? Good, thank you. How's life for you at the moment? Yeah, good. Um, enjoying it, working hard. Um, Due to your talents and you being a model professional, you know, you're one of the world's wealthiest players. I read an interesting stat recently that uh, three and five football players uh, within five years of retiring go bankrupt. What advice would you give to young up and coming players to avoid that situation? Um, I can only really speak from my own personal um, experiences and I think that as a kid growing up, all I ever thought about and imagined was playing football for, uh, for the team at West Ham when I was a kid. Getting into that first team and becoming a professional footballer, not for the trappings, not for what goes alongside being a footballer that we all see now that's promoted, the, the glitz and the glamour and the money, etc., and the cars and the houses. It was purely just to become a footballer and to say that I am a professional footballer. So you never once in the playground <clears throat> said, you know, I want to become a professional football player because I want to be a millionaire. No, I never, I ne no it wasn't about buying a car or being a millionaire. It was just purely, I want to be on match of the day. I want to be in the in the in the credits when you see the FA Cup or or when there's someone lifting the trophy, I want to be that man. And it was never about anything that went with it. And I think that's the problem with the kids nowadays. They are opened up to so much stuff like that. They see it through the internet, through the media and stuff. And a lot of the coverage is about the trappings that go alongside being a, a professional sportsman, that they can't sometimes get a bit sidetracked from that. And um, in my own experiences, I, I remember when I actually kind of uh, signed my first pro contract I was on probably £29 a week or something like that it was as a YTS and I signed a pro contract at, at 17 which put me onto about <clears throat> 120 quid or whatever it was a week. I actually felt like a millionaire and mm. I straight away went up Bond Street in London uh, where all the big shops were. My first paycheck in a month I blew it on a pair of shoes. And then I signed bigger contracts and I ended up buying bigger things and I was going out and spending. I wasn't saving. I remember one time I was sitting on my, uh, well, standing on, on the balcony on the block of flats with my dad. Mm. And uh, looking down at a new car that I'd bought, a BMW. Because at the time, as I said, I didn't really have any understanding of money and saving and stuff like that. I was just, if I saw something I liked, I was lucky enough to be able to go out and buy it. And I bought a car, brand new BMW gleaming, sitting down on, the, on the, 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 the pavement outside my block of flats and I said to my dad, do you like my car, dad? And my dad said, yeah, nice car. It's, it's worth more than the flat we're living in. That was a moment in my life when I actually realised, well, it's not about kind of what you've got, it's a, you've got to strive for something more. And, and, and that took me back to kind of my roots of, it's not about what you've got there, it's, it's good to have nice stuff, but it's about playing and what you, you achieve as a player. Do I want to play for England? Do I want to go on and be a regular in England team? Do I want to win things and stuff? So if some kids don't lucky enough to have them, them moments or don't realise them moments when they come to them and hit them, and I was fortunate that I did.